Hello and welcome to all the ghouls and vampires out there. I'm Joe, here with me is my co-host Dan. Hello and greetings. And we're back with another Halloween episode. For those who love, well, chills and frills, I guess. So, this time we're going to be discussing the first really creepy Michael Myers scene I've ever seen. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, the first one please the first one was not creepy it was actually kind of funny um i that's just my point of view i never found the movie scary i always found it tedious and whatnot well we did an entire review of how much we hated it the second movie was pretty good but it's not of the quality of halloween 4 but here with michael appearing in the mirror appearing all over the room and whatnot in a quiet manner just kind of almost in the background it's actually kind of creepy and it's like he's haunting jamie and he's preying upon her and yeah you get all sorts of vibes that are pretty uh disgusting um yeah it feels like a callback to uh, a lot of classic uh, hammer uh, horror yeah, and also a universal horror. They would have done this sort of thing. And there were some... Well, it's just the black and white horror movies would have done this sort of thing very, very frequently. Well, I think they did it frequently. But, like, it's something I would expect from them. Hammer, maybe not quite to an... Well, actually, yeah, they, I think they would. It's just I'm not sure their Frankenstein or Dracula movies would do it because those movies were a little more in your face. But some of their other lesser horrors certainly did this sort of thing. And they were great. So, yeah, yeah. Th this is a really, really tasteful set of shots, I think. And it establishes Michael in a horror vein, rather unlike, say, Jason Voorhees. Now, Jason Voorhees has some great moments, but he's basically a superpowered zombie in part six for example michael is a demonically possessed um individual and so there are two very different kinds of monsters now with halloween 4 and friday the 13th part six so there's a lot of great stories that could be written with both from this angle and there were some pretty good stories written from this angle regarding jason but not Michael. Michael, this entire plot point and this entire part of his character was thrown out because uh, I don't think they understood what the kind of potential they had for great horror content. That said, the, the scene is really great and the mood is crisp and creepy. It's such a great scene. The prayer Jamie recounts is one that I find chills my blood a little. And the reason for that is that I pray that the Lord takes my soul and whatnot. But here's the thing. In traditional Catholic theology and whatnot, the Lord doesn't take your soul. The thing is, he guides it to heaven, so to speak. So coming at this from a Catholic angle... The only one who tries to take your soul is, well, Satan. So what you have here is a very peculiar type of prayer that chills my blood and adds to the horror mood because it's like she's not praying to God, but praying to someone else, even as she calls for God to protect Rachel and the Groor others, which those characters survive the movie. So it's like there's two prayers taking place at the same time. And this is something that, I know people might say, don't don't think too deeply upon, but I do think the language matters and that we should think deeply upon the meaning of every sentence and how it's worded. What did you think? The foreshadowing uh, was really uh, ominous. Ominous and like, okay, so you'd say it's foreshadowing the fact that Rachel and parents are going to or at least the father is going to survive but then again it kind of goes against that now that i think about it because mommy doesn't make it 
But then again, that's on Jamie's own hand. And I'm only going by Halloween 4. I'm not going by the sequels. So, yeah. Yeah, her... But as for... It's just a storm. With, with the storm uh, raging outside just as she's praying, it doesn't really help the mood of the prayer much. For Jamie, what doesn't help is that the closet door opens on its own. Evidently, I'd say that's probably the... That's basically the door being opened for Michael to get in. Or the shape, I should say. We're going to differentiate. we got to keep differentiating. Because it's not Michael. It's the shape. And I'm going to say Michael is the physical being in the material world. The shape is the demonic, supernatural creature that inhabits the body of Michael. So we had established that in the last video. I got to remember because it's been a bit. I got to, I need to remind myself a little. But she puts the bear back in this place, goes to go back to the bed, only to glance behind her. And you can tell she's got a feeling that she's being watched. And she is. She definitely is. Then what happens is that no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. I mean, Michael. Sorry, bad joke. But, well, it was a great joke back in the day, in the 70s. But what happens is Michael... Oh, frick, why do I keep doing that? The shape grabs at her from below the bed, pulling her towards it, obviously, so it could overtake her. And she manages to free herself and starts throwing herself at the door screaming shrilly and slamming her fist against the door and crying out for someone to help her. And the sad thing for Jamie is that there is no one to help her, deep down. The only one who can help her is herself. The only one who could help guide her back to the light and away from the demonic force that is the shape is her. Now the reason I take that attitude is I guess I have more of the attitude that the shape is... Because horror and fantasy are kind of interlinked. And you also look at the idea of the hero's journey. She is kind of in, when it comes to the shape, in a pit. And the shape is the darkness in the heart of Michael and Jamie. The only one who can maybe pull them free from it is themselves. Just as is always the case when it comes to the darkness that lies deep in your soul. The only one who can help you shake it off deep down is you. You have to fight it. You have to be optimistic. And it's hard. It's hard. Uh, speaking of someone with depression issues, it is bloody hard. And it's a continuous uphill battle every day to keep your optimism and your hope alive. But you need hope. Jamie really does need it. And the only one who could help her is herself. But the sad thing is... Character-wise, she doesn't. So she becomes Michael's successor by the end. That said, Jamie opens the door just as Michael, or the, what looks like Michael, rises to his feet from behind the bed, only for her to be to discover on the other side of the door another Michael. It's the curse of the doppelgangers. <laughs> or at least you have that meme of the two Spider-Men just pointing at each other. But, no, they're not going to do that. Actually, this is basically, I think, an argument where the shape has surrounded her, so to speak. Or at least has begun to engulf her. She could try moving, slipping past him towards the light that's behind him. But instead, she throws herself into the closet to hide and clutch at her bear. It's a very natural reaction for a child. But it's something that if you look at look at it just as a psychological scene that was not the correct response she's busy closing herself off from everything yeah and hiding from it that being said looking at it from a supernatural perspective um it was a very natural response but it leaves her vulnerable because there's nowhere to run after that and uh, when it comes to children, oftentimes when it comes to the supernatural... In these movies, yeah. In these movies, there's two places that a child 
would be threatened by, and that's under the bed and the closet. Yeah, it's an entire trope and uh, whatnot with that, I've noticed. Oh, there's also uh, the the monster coming in from the window. Yeah, yeah. Which, in this case, Michael, or at least the shape, came in through the closet door. So she's hiding in the closet from whence the shape came. That's no coinky dink. And does that mean that she's already kind of been started to be overtaken? Like, has the process started here because she hid in the closet where the shape came out from? Maybe. Yeah. This this movie is a great one. It's a fascinating film. And it's a very underrated one. I think it's a very smart film. It's just... Um, you know, it got tainted by Halloween 5 and 6, which were not great. Now, if you enjoyed Halloween 5, go ahead. Love what you love. But I didn't really much care about the movie. I like Halloween 4. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button as though you were Michael taking down one of his victims.